All right, guys, welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. So, yes, I am doing Raid Shadow Legends still. Uh, not only Dragon Champions. So, to all my Dragon Champions video, there will be more Dragon Champions videos. And for all my Raid guys, there's going to be more Raid videos. Don't worry about it. So, today we're going to be doing the definitive guide for Fire Knight 20. So, Fire Knight's Castle. Uh, this guide will work on every other stage for sure. If you want to run it in Fire Knight 20. So, my guide assumes that you have all champions maxed out. So that's including mastery, skills, artifacts, accessories. So because this is end game content, if you're running Fire Knight 20, if you're running other uh, lower stages, you might get away with um, not completing every single thing on a champion, such as skills or um, not having artifacts plus 16, things like that and accessories. So we're going to be discussing my team. Uh, we'll, I'll show you my team, it's basically like a puzzle. Every person has a role. Having champions with multiple roles is obviously much better. And you can see that my best time is 5 minutes and 49 seconds. I don't know if that was manual or on auto, but we'll see when I do my team. So yeah, we're going to discuss my team, the roles they fill, and we'll also have replacements to fit the puzzle. So for you guys, and uh, just a quick note, this guide will also work for other levels of Fire Knight. So again, I got to stress that because some people are going to see the video and then they don't want to watch because they think it's only Fire Knight 20, but it will work on other levels. So I was using Vrask on my team because I love the way that he AOE heals by switching him out for Apothecary. So we're going to be running Apothecary now because he's one of the guys that I mentioned on my list that you can use because he has a triple hit on his basic attack. So yeah, so we're going to run this in. Martyr lead. So increase all ally defense and all battles by 33%. Uh, there are many other champions that have the same aura skill, but they are uh, specific to dungeons instead of the universal one that Mar uh, Martyr has. I'm using Molly Tankard as a provoker. I'm running Cold Heart for the uh, quadruple hit, heal reduction. Yeah, we're just getting over this. Uh, I start the fight and we'll talk about it. So we're gonna talk about mechanics first because the first thing we need to discuss about the Fire Knight fight is the mechanics. So knowing the moves of your enemies will allow you to find out the strengths and weaknesses, and then we can minimize casualties and maximize strengths. So Fire Knight's A1, by the way, the Fire Knight's name is Fyro. Uh, yeah, we're the bad guys here because we're attacking the Fire Knight, not he's attacking us. So we invaded his uh, castle. So we are actually the bad guys. We're trying to loot it. <laughs> so his A1, uh, Searing Storm. It's an AoE attack, attacks all enemies, decreases enemy max HP by 15% of the damage dealt. A2, Dazzling Flames, attacks all enemies and he places a 30% decrease speed debuff for 3 turns. So you can see all of his abilities are AoEs. Uh, he has, his passive ability is what makes this fight uh, very... Uh, interesting if you ask me his passive is a cloak of fire so he starts the battle with divine shield and then the shield reduces damage fire received by 80 percent so you're gonna get that shield down before you can do any damage and he also prevents debuffs when that shield is up uh, the shield can cannot be removed with abilities that can remove uh, buffs and the shield has a durability of 10 and can be broken when hit enough times uh, the shield regenerates every turn so if Fyro gets a turn when the shield is up, he will attack all enemies and then he decreasing their uh, while decreasing their max HP and healing himself. The value of the heal and the damage dealt increases according to the strength of the shield at the time of the attack. So you gotta make sure you get that shield down. So what roles do we need to fill in order to complete this fight in auto? So you will need champions that can cover multiple roles if possible. So champions with multi hits and heal reduction excel in this fight. Fire Shield has a durability of 10, as I said before, so having champions that can quickly uh, take you down with multi-hits is essential. It's crucial. If his shield is up, he resists all debuffs, such as the important ones, which are the heal reduction, as I said. And another one is not a debuff that I want to mention, is the turn meter reduction. That is very good in this fight. You can reduce your clear time by a lot. Other skills are great. Are um, Taking that shield are, the, are buffs such as reflect damage. Because once he does his AoE attack, he will automatically take one hit per champion that has reflect damage on him. And counterattack is also amazing, but you guys are probably well aware that counterattack is amazing. But some people do not have a Skull Crusher, Martyr, or Valkyrie. So those are the three champions that have AoE counterattack. Uh, we will discuss replacements for that buff later. So there are plenty of multi hitters in the game. So I'm not going to be able to cover all of them. Uh, the multi hitters that I'm using are uh, Tomb Lord because he has turn meter manipulation. A triple hit and he has uh, poisons on it so that's a bonus as well as an AoE decrease attack and decrease defense as you can see on these minions right here so he's not going to be easy to get so a great replacement is Rosin uh, who can be obtained by a permanent fusion so Rosin has tournament manipulation as well as a triple hit 
and he can also place weaken and decrease defense which will allow you to do more damage on the fire knight so yeah technically rosin is free to play i think a lot of people have him by now uh cold heart is another multi-hitter so i use cold heart because she's amazing in this fight she has a quadruple hit on her basic attack as well as 100 percent heal reduction and she has terminal manipulation with a bunch of damage on her a3 the only issue with her is that she is squishy so she's susceptible to death so you're going to need provokers uh, such as molly what i have we're going to be discussing provokers later uh, to keep her alive during the fight and another problem is her ai so she uses heart seeker when the shield is up and um, a good thing about her is that she combos very well with a counter attack strat so she has counter attack on her uh, and this guy aoe she's gonna hit him with four hits right there <laughs> we just lost cold heart but molly's here to bring her back to life so that's one of the issues with her as i said uh Tayrell. so i am not using Tayrell, but he's a good choice for a multi-hitter he only has double attack but that's that's okay because the rest of his kit is amazing in this fight it has decreased attack on his basic he's useful in dungeon so i would highly recommend building Tayrell. and he can also decrease turn meter and place place decreased defense on the fire knight so apothecary is the guy that i'm using triple hit on his basic attack uh, he's an amazing sport he can heal and provide speed up and turn meter boost so going faster means you get more hits in so you can take down that shield so we talk about rowan so she has multi hits on her a2 and a3 and her basic attack can apply 100 percent heal reduction she also has poison and is capable of stunning some of the mobs in the first two waves the only issue like most attack champions is that she is also squishy it's like cold heart uh for a rare champion we're going to discuss hyria so she's a great choice for fire knight but it will be extremely difficult keeping her alive uh, to do anything in the last phase so i would highly recommend using her if you have a reviver and provoker such as molly uh, she has an ability that can call on her allies to assist so every single ally that you have even the um multi-hitters they're gonna be oh, everyone's gonna be using their basic and then she's gonna be doing a lot of damage probably take down that shield real quick uh frostbringer she plays a role of a multi-hitter as well as being able to apply 100 percent heal reduction on her basic uh, she's also a buffer and can be used as uh, the lead in the dungeon her aura skill is universal, so it increases defense and dungeons by 33%. So she can take the role of um, Martyr. I think I'm going over too many multi-hitters, but um, I'm almost done. So let's talk about Light Sworn. He's amazing. He has a triple hit basic attack. He can decrease attack and decrease speed at the same time on his A2. And he can apply increased defense and revive on death on all allies. So he plays the role of triple hitter and buffer. Great choice for uh, Fire Knight 20. Skull Sworn. So Skull Sworn is a rare. He's farmable. He's amazing for this fight. He can hit a bunch of times with his A1, and he can also apply a counter attack on himself. So he gains turn meter based on his crits. So he'll be going often and can almost single-handedly take down the shield. Uh, he's a farmable champion, so you guys can check out my guide on him. Um, in that guide, I said that the additional hits do not count against the uh, against the shield, but they actually do. So that is a mistake there. So there's too many multi-hitters in the game. So we're going to move on to the heal reduction champions. Let's see what we got first. Uh, defense percentage, crit rate, flat stats, stun. I'm going to sell that for 81k. So that was 6 minute run time. So I guess that wasn't on that was an auto right there. So she did 1.5 mil even though she kept dying. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to run this back. And we're going to keep going. So uh, heal reduction. So I am using cold heart as I said. So yeah, she is amazing. Um, she's As I said, she's squishy. Yeah, not, not, not much else to say. She's amazing for the fight. So the heal reduction subs, I'm not going to go over Frostbringer again. She does have heal reduction. And the other champions I mentioned in the multi-hitters category, such as uh, Coldheart. So Kalia, she was on my list of champions in the Ice Golem 20 video. And here she is again. So her A2 ability can place 100% heal reduction. And she also has a triple hit on her A3 ability. And she synergizes with Ator, or Ator, I don't know how you pronounce that guy's name still. Who can be used as an off tank slash provoker so her hp burn is a bonus in this battle luria she does have heal reduction but it's all rng based since since she has a chance of placing decreased defense or heal reduction or decreased speed all of which are helpful against fire but the heal reduction is more useful uh the reason why i recommend uh, luria is because of her a2 ability this aoe ability can freeze all enemies which will help minimize casualties I'm talking about the enemies in eight, uh, wave 1 and wave 2. So she fills two roles in this battle. So solid choice overall. Uh, let's talk about Paragon. So Paragon's a rare uh, void champion. I know a lot of people have seen this guy. He doesn't die. You can see him in the faction crypts. So he fills multiple roles, but he doesn't excel at any one of them. 
He can decrease turn meter on his basic and he can place decrease attack and 100% heal reduction on his A3. So what makes him good is that he is unkillable. He has unkillable. And once he gets his buff on him, the Fire Knight will never be able to kill him. So I wouldn't highly I wouldn't highly recommend him, but he is an option if you don't have anybody else. Uh, let's talk about a dwarf here. Beardol Fellhammer. So this guy is uh, I guess he is pretty new. Uh, he's basically designed for this dungeon. He has a double hit on his basic attack with 100% heal reduction. Triple attack on his A2 that can also apply a shield on himself equal to 30% of the damage dealt and his passive ability makes him constantly have counter attack. So yeah, amazing guy for this fight. So that's it for the heal reduction guys. There are, pro there are more heal reduction champions. We can't cover them all in one video. So we're going to talk about counter attack mechanic. So this is great for this dungeon. So whenever a fire AOE attacks, the whole team will retaliate and then they will quickly take down a shield in the process. So again, I am using Martyr for a counter as well as her AOE Provoke for the first two waves. And since there's only three uh, counterattack champions, as I said, the AOE counterattack champions, Martyr, Valkyrie, and Skullcrusher, we will discuss a way to make up for it for those that do not have those three. So the way to make up for it is through a single target counterattack or using champions that are able to apply a reflect damage on all allies. So reflect damage counts as one hit per champion when it fire uh, AOEs. So let's discuss some champions that can fill this role. Uh, Jizo, the good news is Jizo is given to all players when they start the game. He has a double hit on his basic attack, which is a bonus. It's better than having a single hit. His A2 is where he really shines. So he can place a shield on an ally and counterattack. So on auto, hopefully he places that these buffs on the multi-hitter roll. And the good news is he is granted another turn after he applies the buffs. Uh, Seneschal places counter on himself. And then he's also capable of uh, provoking. So he can play two roles in this battle. So again, it's always better to have champions that can play multiple roles because you're only allowed five champions. Vergus, I don't really talk much about Vergus, but he does have reflect damage on two different abilities and he can also place ally protection on his A2. So he can also be used as the aura skill leader in this dungeon because so, he increases defense by 33%. Uh, Fell Hound. I know there's a lot of, uh, he's like a fan favorite. He is a rare void champion. So honestly, he would be my go-to champion if I didn't have Mortar. I mean, I didn't build my Falhound because of that reason. Uh, because he is capable of placing reflect damage on all allies, so that's an AoE one, as well as a continuous heal. So his decreased speed and on his AoE basic are great for this fight. And he's also capable of placing block damage on one ally for one turn. So there were some that were listed at a different role previously, such as Skull Sworn and Beardall Falhammer. So I won't be going over them again, because um, Skull Sworn can place counter attack on himself and Beardall as well. So what do I think about turn meter reduction for the Fire Knight 20? So I personally, I think it is, it is, it's optional, but it's very, very good for this fight. So you can win without it, but it's very good for the fight because it will help clear. The, um, it will help you with your clear time as well as minimize casualties once you reach uh, Fyro. So Rosin, I already discussed, Kolhar, I already discussed, and Tomb Lord, they all have uh, turn meter reduction. Allure is pretty good. She's very, actually, she's very good for Fire Knight. She is crazy because she has multi hits on her basic. And um, the only thing you have to do is make sure that her, you have her at 100% crit rate because after every crit, she can reduce turn meter by 25%. So she can reduce 75% turn meter on basic up to 75%. That is crazy. Uh, again, Tayrell, he has turn meter reduction on his A3. And he's also great in the first two waves with his AoE that can decrease uh, defense. So overall, a great champion, but you guys all know that. Royal Guard, he's a great choice for this fight. His hamstring ability is a quadruple hit that can decrease speed as well as decreasing turn meter. So it decreases turn meter by 25%, so it has a 60% chance per hit, so it can potentially 100% turn meter reduction. And his A2 will help end the fight quicker when the shield is down because it deals massive damage and is based on enemy max HP. What did I get? Defense percentage, fury, crit damage, uh, I'm getting rid of this. So yeah, let's discuss the final roll. Uh, is the tank slash provoke role. So I personally think that Molly is the best provoker in the game, but uh, not all players have her. So we're going to discuss some substitutions. So Crimson Helm, again, I talked about her in my uh, Ice Golem video. She's a very good champion to use in this role. She has amazing utility. Her basic attack applies decreased attack, uh, which can help you out a bit in this fight. Once you reach the Fire Knight, her A2 is an AOE provoke. So although there is some RNG involved because it's four hits at random, uh, the Provoke also places a block damage 
on herself, so she's essentially taking zero damage in the process. Her A3 ability provides a much needed uh, defense up for all allies, as well as placing revive on death, which can save you in a pinch. So she's also a solid choice for her lead. She raises HP by 33% in dungeons. So against the Neshell, he's capable of placing Leech. Uh, he already plays a different role in the counterattack. So you can place Leech on the enemy, which could help a little bit with healing. Uh, he also provides a perfect veil, which can be used hopefully to protect a squishy ally. So he's primar primarily here for his A3, which when maxed out places 100% provoke a debuff on all enemies, which is good for the first two waves. And he's a good choice for a secondary tank. Uh, he also plays a counterattack himself, which is amazing in this fight. And that uh, basically plays a leech on every enemy in the first two waves. Uh, Aether, I already talked about this guy too. He's not top tier, but he can be useful in this fight due to his provoke on A1 and A2. He's also capable of healing himself with his passive and plays a counter on himself. So win rate will drop with him on the team a bit unless you're using him with Kali, I guess. But he should only be used if you don't have the others. Also, again, has synergy with Kalia, who's great in this dungeon. So they basically sustain each other. Uh, and Towering Titan, not, we're not going to talk too much about him. He has Provoke on A2 and some utility. There are for sure other choices in every single one of these roles. But we're not going to be going over every single champion. So these are the ones that come to mind. So I hope this guide helped you or will help you in the future of clearing Fire Knight 20 on auto or other levels. Uh, make sure you guys share this with your clan if you can. Make sure you guys share this with your clan so that they can figure out how to beat this. And uh, also stay tuned for Auto Spider 20 guide as well. So if you guys do not want to miss it, make sure you guys uh, subscribe to my channel. And if you guys found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, drop a like. And if you guys are new to the channel and you like what you see, if you want more Ray Shalaz content, or just uh, gaming in general because I'm doing Dragon Champions as well. Yeah, make sure you guys subscribe. And if you guys want to, enable notifications. Why not? <clears throat> so anyways, that's it for the video. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.